Hey everybody, hope you're all doing good. I've got a pretty uh, quick video here for you tonight, but I wanted to show you how you can run an Xbox Series S with a computer power supply. Now, I didn't see any other videos of this. There are lots of videos on how to repair this guy, the power supply, but from my research, it seems that the early Xbox Series X have a lovely issue where they blow up their OEM power supply after about a year or two of use. So, which uh, again, Microsoft, thank you for making a very stellar product, but, uh, we kind of don't really want to buy a replacement one of this, especially like me, I traded a computer, gaming computer for the Xbox Series X that I have here in this video that I wasn't sure if it was working. Now, the guy that I bought it from, he said that it worked fine, he bought it new, but then it just wouldn't power on. So I'm like, you know what? I think it's gonna be the power supply. Opened it up, took a look at the power supply. You can see here, it looks it looks in, let me move my light, looks in very good shape. However, it doesn't actually, work so i'm like you know what let's see what we got working for the voltages here so if you look right down here at the bottom where my thumb is you'll see um, a couple points those two points there let me get something to actually point at this that's not conductive because i'd rather not electrocute myself oh, this piece of wire so if you look here actually i guess wire is conductive we got 12 volt a uh, 12 volt direct standby here and then if you look right there ground for this one however when we look at the cable here that I've cut off, I'll get to that in a second, you'll also see 12 volt direct here, and then this other one, which we don't really have a descriptor for that, but if we go by what the other one is, this connected, well, connected, yes, connected on the bottom there, you'll see a gray wire, I'm trying to get the light on here so you can see better, you'll see a gray wire, and then a black for ground, spoiler alert, and then you'll also see these ones here for the plug that I cut off, I'll show you in a second, for ground, and then these guys are 12 volt, and we can verify this further, which I did, so I saved the uh, pants peeing moment that I had five minutes ago when I plugged this thing in and wasn't sure if it was gonna blow itself up. So basically, long story short, we've got a single 12 standby. However, a computer power supply doesn't put out 12 volt standby, but uh, we can just wire this up to 12 volt like I did. I'll show you here. A single black ground right there, and then this guy, 12 volt direct. We've got one, two, three, four, five gray. Those have to be 12 volt, and then we have our five, ground. So that's all there is to this. This thing, there's nothing really to it. We'll go over here to the actual Xbox and I'll show you what we got. So we got an old ancient uh, BFG Tech 400 watt power supply. Now something I, I thought I should mention here is that I I might be able to show you this here. I don't want to move it around too, too much. Let's uh, let's see if I can, I can get my camera in here. So if we look, um, the Xbox's power supply has a, I believe it's 200 something watt uh, output. Now, most power supplies for computer have much more than 200 watt, but something we need to look at is that, like I was just showing you, the Xbox, uh, all those output pins are 12 volts, so when we look at our power supply, let's actually look here and see if, hopefully you can see in the video, but it says 12 volt, those are our rails, so 12 volt one and 12 volt, volt two, but both of those rails output 304 watts, so we're over the 200, I think it was either 200 or 220 watt that the Xbox wanted, this does 300, so if you pick out a power supply, uh, please try to look for one that has over 200 watt on your 12 volt. That's very important. If you have, say, a 300 watt power supply, but then your 12 volt rail is only 120 watt or 160 watt, it's liable to not work because you know we're very uh, we're very official here with this with these repairs. So with our plugs, our connectors, if you're not going to be able to see this, but down here we've got our very lovely. I just taped this together with some electrical tape before I soldered anything just to test it in case I had to pull everything apart. But basically we got, we have to take apart our whole machine. There's some very good uh, guides online for that. Now, when we rip it all apart, you'll have access to the power supply. We have to disassemble the whole power supply, take it all apart, cut out that plug. We're going to swap over our wires, solder them in there. Again, here's that little mini one with the standby, which again, just on 12 volt because we don't have 12 volt standby on a standard computer power supply. But 12 volt on this guy, ground on that, and then here's our plug, it goes down in there. You can't see it. Uh, if you look online, you'll see some schematics for this. Basically, our plug is gonna go there. Again, all the gray wires are 12 volt, and all the ground wires are, sorry, all the black wires are ground, all the gray wires are yellow 12 volt. So then this is here just to provide a little bit of extra baffle so they don't touch and zap each other. But anyway, so we've got this plugged in. The last step we need to do is actually trigger this power supply because what I think is that that 12 volt standby is supposed to connect to the Xbox's power supply and then kind of tell it when to turn on. So obviously with a computer power supply, 
we don't have the 12 volt standby. So to tell it to turn on, we're basically just taking a switch. Now I use the switch for this because in case something happened, you can just let go of the switch and it'll shut off the power going to the power supply, which is very crucial in this. So if we look at our computer power supply, again, you can find this all online. Our green wire here, right here, and any of these black ground wires, uh, when shorted with the switch in this case, whoops, will turn on the power supply. So basically how this is gonna happen, we have our TV, which again, to show you, I'm not bullshitting anybody, no signal. It's plugged in with the HDMI right here. We do have a controller plugged in because for some reason, uh, when I did this, the power supply, uh, the, sorry, the power button on the Xbox wouldn't actually turn it on. So I have to do some more testing and stuff with that, but I will show you how I got it going just as is. So basically we got our power plug from the wall going into our power supply. Some power supplies have a switch. Got to make sure it's on the line there for on, obviously. And then I'm going to set down my uh, phone here on the tripod. So basically when I press this button, that's going to turn on our power supply. Now our Xbox, if you hear very faintly, you'll hear that. And then you see our fan. I don't know if you can see in there, but the fan for the Xbox is starting to spin. So it does kind of like a pre-boot. I think this is kind of telling it that it's ready to rock and roll. Now I'm still holding the button. We still have power. TV is still off. So what I want to show you now is that I tried the power button on the Xbox, which here, let me actually do, what a crazy setup. I'm playing Twister here. So if I press the power button on the Xbox, it doesn't really seem to power on the Xbox. So what I did is for fun, because I had an Xbox One back in the day, that was a total piece of junk and I had to turn it on with the controller. I plugged in the controller with USB. Now if we press our button on the controller, you heard that there. And then in two seconds, we have our Xbox up online. So and that looks like the, uh, the previous owner's account, but you'll see it works. Let me, oh, I got to angle this. Apologies for the weird, uh, the weird configuration here. I'm crawling around, around like a weirdo, but, uh, yeah, basically we have this Xbox working with the computer's power supply. That that's as simple as it is. Now this whole time <laughs> I have to hold this. You can, uh, to do this permanently, you can take out those green and black wire and just short them together and turn the Xbox on with a computer power supply. Now, I'm uh, probably gonna purchase a power supply for this and, and rebuild it now that I know it actually works okay versus actually doing this craziness. But you can see here, it's, uh, it, it's on and we're, uh, and we're, we are, we are using the, uh, the Xbox. It's here and it's, uh, and it's working. And that's all it is. You gotta, you gotta wire up 12 or 10, whatever it is, wires. So, pretty simple. Again, hold this button. If I let go of the button, let's see if I can get this in the angle here. If I let go, Everything shuts off, so. And then our power supply also isn't running either because it has this main breaker switch which we can shut off with this. Now, again, if we were to just put a piece of wire in here, as soon as I would hit this, the whole thing would turn on. But then it's weird because the button, uh, the Xbox's power button doesn't actually turn the Xbox. We have to use a wired controller. Now, this is as far as I've got with this so far. I got this running about five minutes ago. And <laughs> you see we've got the remote here to, so I can press the button. But if we have a wireless controller connected to this, maybe it will work. I, uh, I'm not too, too sure. And I wouldn't really advise using this permanently. I mean, you, you could use it, but the idea of it's kind of weird. I would definitely recommend to keep it unplugged or switched off in this case when you're not using it. I mean, to use it and then just switch on the computer power supply with the wired controller. I mean, I, I, I guess you could use it. I don't... I don't know 100%. Uh, when I was working on this, when I was taking it apart, I did kind of damage this connector here, which I believe is for the... Actually, you know what? I think that might be the button. Yeah, you know what? That's the button. I did kind of damage this connector, so it might not turn on just because of the connector being a little bit loose. It kind of broke when I was taking it off, so that's uh, that's entirely possible. That's got to get soldered back together or, or something. So anyway, I don't know, but it does work with this. You can do this yourself. It was very easy. Said and done took me about a half hour. And uh, again, do at your own risk, of course, be very careful. But uh, yeah, that's how you can test these. And if you're uh, limited budget this holiday season, you can use your own, that power supply there was free. So for potentially a free, you can have your Xbox Series X working again. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be very careful doing this. Uh, again, I won't be responsible if you zap yourself or blow something up or start a fire in your basement. It's only 12 volt, which uh, again, 12 volt isn't a lot. But uh, again, you got to be real careful when you're working with, with voltages. Get, to, get a, a responsible adult like myself to help you. So anyway, that's all, guys. Good luck with this and take care.